Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today I'm going to be playing around with a, a new feature uh, of the channel and um, this is really prompted by a, uh, a subscriber to my channel who on the, um, the Age of Conan video had asked if I had written any, uh, written any adventures for Conan 2D20, uh, the Modiphius uh, system. And I, I know that I had, I had about three or four adventures written there, and I started searching all over the place to find where exactly did I put them. Uh, I, I have a new computer, so I knew that not all of my files had transferred. I, I went through about 20 flash drives, and then finally I decided to take a look at my, uh, my old laptop, and there I had a file folder of all of my writing projects and, and so when I took a look at them uh, I you know found the adventures that I had written for the Conan 2D20 system but I also found some of my uh, earlier writings that were um, that were associated with either computer RPGs, MMO RPGs or tabletop RPGs and they ranged in date from 2011 through 2019. So this is kind of like a, a decades long snapshot of some of the uh, writing projects that I had worked on. Uh, many of them are fragments or, you know, a few of them I actually published, uh, but for the most part, they are, they were just sitting on my laptop and you know, languishing away in time and, and not really much being done with them. Uh, and, and that's how I found that a lot of my projects, um, you know, I would probably say about 80 to 90% of them, uh, they're just ideas that are just putting down there. There's character backgrounds and, you know, uh, short stories or fragments of short stories some gaming material, uh, you know, at least one or two RPGs that I was working on uh, developing and, and then kind of got bogged down and, you know, moved on. So what I thought what I would do with this series is just go through some of those and, um, you know, and highlight them as I go through. And, you know, if, if you draw some inspiration from doing this, because I, I've always found that regardless of the, the format of a role-playing game that I'm playing, whether it be tabletop, computer, or MMO, uh, I, I always like to uh, derive stories from, you know, from them and, you know, write either these, like I said, character backgrounds or, or just uh, short stories based on the content of uh, what was going on in the game, you know, and that's particularly true for computer RPGs and, uh, and MMO RPGs. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And we're gonna take a look at my, my first installment of this. And so this is something that I wrote in uh, 2011 and it is, uh, it is associated with the MMO Star Wars, the new, uh, the old Republic, Star Wars, the old Republic MMO. All right. So, uh, and that game came out, I, I want to say probably pretty close to then, uh, sometime around maybe 2010 or, you know, maybe even 2011. So one of the first characters I played in that game was a, uh, was a female Sith, uh, Marauder. Uh, so she would eventually follow the Marauder track, which is a, a two, blade fighting style and this is based primarily on like a, a pre before you get to uh Korriban and then once she arrived on Korriban so I have these short fragments that I will read off to you uh, I'm an amateur writer I don't you know I do not do this thankfully for a living this is just um you know this is just something that I do as a hobby. <coughs> so, Mei Aijin, which is, uh, which is Japanese for basically dark mistress. 
of the Sith. During a fitful sleep, the memories flood her semi-conscious mind. Vague images at first spark the inner turmoil that always brought up the fear, shame, and anger caused by her father's death. As the dark side of the Force swelled within her, the images became more vivid. Her father was a pure-blooded Sith, and within the month of his own death, he had risen to become Zephthor, Dark Lord of the Sith. He had a good command of the dark side, but his ascension was too fast. Yes, he had defeated his master to seize his place, but his master was weak. When Lord Zephthor had taken his first apprentice, he had underestimated Dresden's abilities. Lord Zephthor had only begun to train his new apprentice, and yet it appeared that Dresden was holding something back. Dresden had shown a lack of concentration in combat, and he frequently tapped into the dark side at inopportune times. Lord Zephthor had chastised him often, but he also tried to impart as much of his own knowledge into his apprentice as he could. It was a morning like most, just short of a month after Dresden had become his father's apprentice. Several dark lords, along with their apprentices, had congregated at the arena. Zeptor had brought his daughter, his only child, to watch the morning games as, she, as he often did. Like her father, she too was gifted in the ways of the Force. Unlike her father, she was vastly more gifted, and not easily led to overconfidence. Dark Lord Zephthor announced in grand gesture that he would test his apprentice. Dresden appeared tentative at first. He stepped forward and ignited his lightsaber, and prepared for his master's attack. Zephthor approached the center of the ring, and ignited his two sabers, uh, lightsabers, and prepared himself as well. The other dark lords watched in silent anticipation. There was no countdown other, or other telltale sign, uh, signal. The two Sith warriors instinctively sprung into action simultaneously. Dresden did not hesitate to reveal his father's, uh, his master's, that should have been his master's folly. He was able to parry her father's attack effortlessly. He quickly shifted from defensive stances to offense and pressed the fight. He was no longer mere apprentice with just a few weeks of training in either combat or his command of the dark side. Although Zeptar had managed to prolong the battle as best he could, all could see how it would turn out. The two Sith shifted and whirled about the arena their crimson blades clashing with a hiss, passing near hits with a familiar buzzing sound. Suddenly, the opportunity came. Dresden, with a faint move, had slipped under one of Zephthar's strokes, and he easily thrust his own blade deep into his master's, i got to correct this, uh, and into her father's, I'm sorry, her father's arm pet. Zephthar stumbled, falling to a knee. Dresden silently and slowly walked around his foe, paused for a moment, and then finished his master off with a single stroke of his blade. Dresden stood in the ring, tall and triumphant. The Dark Lords looked on, with mocking expressions on their faces, directed at the crumbling body of Zeptor. She knew then that her father had been set up, Dresden paced around the body of her fallen father a few times. He used his dark side powers to lift her father's lightsaber to his hand. Still looking at the crowd with a smirk on his face, he placed one of the lightsabers to his belt. He approached the young girl and he tossed the other at her feet. He mockingly said, maybe someday you will learn to use this better than your father. He then turned away and walked towards his true master, one of the other Dark Lords. The young Sith girl was vastly attuned to the dark side of the Force. Her passion was explosive, 
but this was not her true power. Even when the dark side was fully flowing within her and through her, she could mask it. None, not even her father's former master, could detect her true potential. The apprentice Dresden had only walked about five paces. He suddenly stopped and looked down in amazement as the point of a light of light erupted from his chest. The blade had passed through his spine, his heart, and protruded nearly its full length from his chest. Then it was turned off. His eyes widened, and all he managed was a brief gurgle as he fell lifeless to the ground. Once he fell, the young girl was revealed to the stunned onlookers, the young Sith girl holding her father's lightsaber. When Mai, Mai Jin had woken from her sleep, the images of her dream had faded from her mind. That was five years ago, and on this day, she is to depart for Korriban. There, on the sacred planet, she will begin her own apprenticeship to become a true Sith. Unlike her father, she will never put herself into the position of serving for long a weak master, nor will she place her trust in anyone besides herself. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken. The force shall, set, shall free me. So that's the introduction of my character. And, you know, as you can see, it's just a, a prequel to the arrival on Korriban. And Korriban is where all Sith characters in uh, Star Wars The Old Republic MMO uh, begin their, uh, their introduction to their training. So it was, um, you know, it was a way for me to get the, the, uh, the concept of the game and, and just the tone of the game uh, more into an immersive feel for me to then turn and start writing uh, a backstory, as, as you will, for a character in a massively multiplayer online game. So many of the practices that we do in, uh, in tabletop role-playing games, you know, they, they are easily carried over when you're playing a, a computer RPG or an MMORPG or whatever. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, the, the techniques of role-playing are the same across all of them. You know, so there, there is a much broader uh, role-playing game hobby than, uh, than sometimes we, you know, we like to, uh, you know, think of it as. Um, many times I think people compartmentalize and they say, well, you know, I just play this or I, you know, just play that format of role-playing games. And, you know, oftentimes they feel that you, you only develop that sense of role-playing and, and how to role-play well when it's done with other other people at the table um, whereas you know with even with massively multiplayer uh, RPGs since it's over the screen a lot of times people in a tabletop part uh, you know portion of a hobby don't feel that that's true role playing because you're not at the table with them and um, you know I, I just beg to differ I mean I think that it's you know um, even in a solo RPG, you're, you're still trying to immerse yourself in the, in the character that you've created and you can, you know, create these stories that are, revolve around it. So uh, I hope you like this video. If you'd like to see more of these, please leave that in the comments section. Uh, I have at least two more, I believe, or one more story of uh, Mei Jin and, and that will take you into the the tutorial practically of, uh, you know, of Star Wars, the Old Republic MMO. And, uh, and there was a total of like 23 stories that I discovered on, uh, 
you know, on that file. So I will go through those and that will basically carry us from 2011 through 2019 of my writing projects that were, you know, on that old computer. So again, thanks for joining. I hope you like this. Um, leave questions and comments. Uh, I will go back and, and make a few corrections there in that, in that little story. Uh, and uh, that I believe I originally posted, in, and hopefully not in that same uh, format, but there was a, uh, it was like an amateur's writing forum um, where you, you just uploaded these things. It's like the fiction, the fiction, uh, amateur fiction writers uh, association, and there was like a, a thing that you could upload your stuff to there. Um, so I'm pretty sure that that might be there and reading it now, I'm like, you know, almost 11 years lower or 11 years later, I'm like, wow, I could have done some better editing there and, and worked it through. So once again, thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed that and have a great day.